So let me give you an example of a paper that actually just uh, came out yesterday. Uh, it, it took uh, 18 uh, individuals uh, who uh, were going to practice a traditional high-fat, low-carbohydrate ketogenic diet. And the purpose of the paper was to look at uh, lipids. And they wrote that their baseline LDL was about 127. Uh, don't quote me, but about 127. A little high for most people. I could care less, but a little high for most people. These 18 individuals, when they went on the ketogenic diet, most of them, which actually surprised me, uh, more than doubled their LDL. Some people went to LDLs of, uh, I kid you not, at least in this paper, five and 600. Oh, wow. And these physicians who were following them, they, they did the ketogenic diet for a year. And some of these people, the, uh, Researchers convinced them if they were going to continue on this, because it was a year study, please start taking a statin drug because we're scared to death. Um, interestingly enough, during the study period, nobody had a cardiovascular event. Uh, then when they stopped the study, their LDLs came back down. And the purpose of the study was, wow, you know, be careful, a ketogenic diet is really raising your risk factors for heart disease. Now, the problem with that study, and that gets to part two, is they did not look at either inflammatory markers, but more specifically, they did not look for either oxidized LDL. They did not look for a better test, which is called ox phospholipid ApoB, ox PL ApoB, which even takes into account another particle called LP little a mm, oxidation. Yeah. They didn't look at any of that, nor did they look at markers of stickiness of blood vessels like LP PLA2, the plaque test. They didn't do any of that. And so all they were looking at was an LDL going up. And they'd even look at Apple B going up. But the point was, and I see this in my practice all the time, I have people who run LDLs of 400. And yet they don't have oxidized LDL. They don't have OxPL Apple B. They have absolutely no stickiness of their blood vessels. And when under duress, we do a CT coronary angiogram on them, they have absolutely no plaque in their blood vessels. None. Now, is that everybody? No. But the idea of just studying LDL from a ketogenic diet and saying, oh my gosh, the LDL went through the roof, doesn't tell me anything quite frankly. Yeah. There's a couple of things there. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I've not seen that and it only came out yesterday. So I will, after this conversation, I'll go and try and dig it out. But the first thing you mentioned that one of the conclusions you mentioned that the research has made was that the ketogenic diet is increasing your risk of a cardiovascular event or words to that effect. Now, again, to be more subtle and nuanced, we can't, let's say that there was an increased risk. We can't say it was a ketogenic diet. We can simply say the way that they were doing their ketogenic diets. Again, I'm, I'm really keen that this conversation is helpful for people. And I know there are multiple ways of doing a ketogenic diet, which I think that nuance is not often brought in. So that's the first thing. The second thing, I guess, is this thing about LDL then, you know, we're going into some very controversial territory, right? Because there is a school of thought now which is saying that LDL should be as low as possible for as long as possible, right? So this is a cumulative risk that builds up throughout your life. So whatever the level is, you want it lower. And actually, I spoke to Peter Atia recently on my podcast. Yeah. And I actually said to Peter, I said, look, some people who follow whole food-based, low-carbohydrate diets and are feeling better, often, sometimes, their LDL level will go up. 
And there is a school of thought within that community that will say, if your inflammation is down, if your triglycerides are down, which of course it generally will be on a low carbohydrate diet, if all these other markers are down, is that LDL a concern? Right. And Peter's view was very much, well, why, why, why choose? Sure, have inflammation down, have a low fasting insulin, but also bring your LDL down as low as you can. That was very much his view. You are a very well respected cardiothoracic surgeon. You have done heart operations. You have seen blood vessels, right? Uh, you've seen diseased blood vessels. How would you pass that out? What would your perspective be on that? In relation to LDL, you've said several times in this conversation, LDL, you're not that bothered about that, but oxidized LDL, you are. First of all, maybe explain the difference between those two things and then how you would ask someone to proceed if their LDL is starting to go up. Yeah, um, I have a great deal of respect with P for Peter. I've spoken with him on actually mutual patient management. Um, he is old school train, particularly from the East Coast of the United States. I'm West Coast trained in lipids and quite frankly, the West Coast and the East Coast of the United States do not see eye to eye and agree on lipid management. But let me put on my uh, cardiothoracic surgeon hat. Uh, Michael DeBakey, um, Denton Cooley's mentor, uh, one of the fathers of, of heart surgery always used to say back in the 50s that cholesterol has nothing to do with heart disease. Uh, cholesterol is merely an innocent bystander that gets trapped up in inflammation that occurs on blood vessels and is basically a spackling compound that patches cracks and potholes. And the more cracks and potholes that occur, the more cholesterol will patch it. And that can lead to a bigger patch. Uh, I use the example in the book, uh, let's suppose I am an alien who has been sent down to orbit Earth and to report back to high command things I observe on Earth. And one of the things that I could report back is that I'm pretty sure ambulances cause car accidents because every time I see a car accident, there's an ambulance. And, you know, association does not mean causation, but that would be a potentially valid observation. And I think DeBakey was trying to say that, is that, Yes, we do see cholesterol in plaques, but the cholesterol did not cause the plaque. The cholesterol was there patching inflammation. Now, that gets back to where I think Peter and I probably disagree. Uh, for years, the cholesterol hypothesis was propagated because statin drugs clearly lowered LDL cholesterol. And it appeared that the lower our LDL went, the uh, less plaque and probably the less uh, cardiovascular events we saw. And so we made the association that it was the lowering of LDL that was actually what was causing the process. Well, then fast forward for a few years, and we now know that statin drugs work by blocking toll-like receptors on blood vessels. And toll-like receptors, uh, and I write about in my books, mm. I call them TLRs, tiny yeah. little radars, are uh, what sends out the signal in terms of inflammatory cytokines to call the immune system into action. And so what was actually happening I think with statin drugs is that you were suppressing the inflammatory signal. You were in, you were suppressing inflammation. And the more you gave of this, the more you would suppress inflammation. But the more you gave of it, the lower your LDL would go down. And so, uh, 
again, association is not causation. Mm -hmm. And so if there is no inflammation on a blood vessel, then there's absolutely no reason for that ambulance uh, cholesterol to show up. Yeah. And so, so that's number one. Um, I've gotten more and more and more interested in the processes that guard our blood vessels, just like we have a mucus layer that lines our gut, which is incredibly important in lots of ways. And we can go into that if you want. We have a similar mucus layer that lines our blood vessels called the, the glycocalyx. Mm-hmm. We also have that a similar mucus layer that forms our blood-brain barrier. We also have a similar mucus-like layer uh, that uh, supports our joint services. And it turns out these mucus layers are fascinatingly made out of um, certain sugar molecules, glycans. And I think that... Uh, Heart disease, uh, brain disease, joint disease all comes from a breakdown or attack on these various sugar uh, layers. On the West Coast, um, Berkeley, uh, University of California, Berkeley, uh, years ago developed a system of looking at the various sizes of LDL particles. And there's basically seven of them. Big ones and little ones. And it became fairly obvious that the little ones uh, were the troublemakers and the big ones actually didn't seem to be of any trouble at all. I used to tell my patients that the big ones were beach balls that bounced along and the little ones were lead, lead sinker weights. If you went fishing, you put on your line. And as long as we were making big ones, we were fine. And as long as we weren't making too many of the little ones, we were fine. And that was kind of the West Coast theory of heart disease. Um, recently, because of these advents of measuring oxidized LDL, or I think oxidized phospholipid apoB, we can further differentiate those individuals who have sticky cholesterol, Mm. for lack of a better word, and those people who have Teflon-lined cholesterol balls. And to me, that's, you know, opened up, I guess, my eyes as to, okay, who do I really need to be worried about? Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I use statin drugs. If, If I break, and I use the example, if I break my leg skiing, I'm going to wear a cast. And I'm going to wear the cast till my bone heals. And then I'm going to take the cast off. I view statin drugs as, okay, I have an inflammatory event that has, you know, started this. I've just put a stent in somebody or in the past just did a bypass. I want to block as much inflammation as I can until I can correct the factors that started that inflammation in the first Mm. place. So I'll use a statin drug, but it's not like I'm going, once I correct the problem, to me, there's no good reason to continue a statin drug. Thanks so much for watching, but don't go anywhere. This next one is sure to surprise you. The idea that ketones are some miraculous fuel or some miraculous fat efficient tool is simply wrong and not based on human research. 